the king, the kingdom, the center. Depending on who you ask, South Bend's MLK Center has gone by many names over the years, but for families and members like Maurice Scott, it was simply known as home. The very first time I came here, man, it was 1978. Man, I walked in, it was like, oh, man, it was like everything, right? And just what you felt, man, it was, it was so important because everybody that was in there at the time looked like me. Everybody was had the same dreams, goals, and you know what? It was level, man. It was an opportunity for every last one of us. From that day forward, man, I never stopped coming to the King, man, and it just became part of your life. I first started coming roughly 40, 40 years ago, and I can remember people, especially on this one job, they said, Scotty, you let your sons go to Martin Luther King Center? I said, let them. I take them. Consumed by work, Tony did not have the chance to research the MLK Center before taking his kids, but the only research he needed was provided by Maurice's five-year-old best friend, Derek White. It provided a safe, welcoming, inclusive environment for all kids. But then also, you know, they held all of us responsible, you know, and so it wasn't like you come in here and you just play basketball. It's like, hey, how's your day going? You know, how are you doing in class? His best friend, Derek White, son of great leader Karen White, <laughs> he would catch the bus to come up here. And Mo had never caught the bus, nor had he come up here. But just knowing if Karen thought it was all right for her son to come here, it was all right for my son to come here. It was like a family. The students and the children that came to the center, they knew that people cared about them. And uh, to have this type of uh, center within our communities is just critical. Under the leadership of past directors like Hal Lindsey, Jewel Davis, Janice Miller, Mo Scott, and more, the King Center experienced significant growth by promoting a culture of love, unity, and family values, a legacy that remains evident to this day. When I came into this position, we already had a really good culture set. It's set by the community. I am mentored by Mo Scott, so we always talk about programming for the people, uh, by the people. Our first program uh, every Monday and Wednesday um, is our, the Breakfast Club, and that's a group of five to ten guys that come lift. We have conversation as well as lift and, and grow our physique, um, but as well as our minds. Following that is our senior chair aerobics. And then from there, we have uh, open rec. And then from there um, is our after school program. It's, it's a real good place to build relationships. You know, I've handed out shoes, coats, whatever. And everybody that's worked here done done that. What's well, been consistent for, for, you know, the time that I served as director and even now, man, it's just trying to be a good example for the community. Um, that's been one of the biggest blessings of, of being able to be part of this because you get to touch so many lives. Um, with my dad being a director here ever since I was born, I got to see my dad help people bring their dreams to life through this place, right? And that's what I grew to be. And, I, and, and now we're really going to get to grow the dream with, with the new Dream Center. Currently, the city is undergoing efforts to transform the King Center to the Dream Center at Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Park. It will be a space that preserves the traditions and values of the past while also incorporating modern amenities that will enhance the experience for generations to come. So in the new Dream Center, um, we'll have a commercial kitchen, we'll have a, a state-of-the-art fitness center, two courts, um, an indoor track, game room, um, art room, just some of many that, um, that we'll be able to take advantage of that this space doesn't currently have, but we still made possible. This center is gonna have the potential to be bigger than the west side of South Bend. But the programming potential that they can bring in, it can be a beacon for Northern Indiana and the Midwest. So it's gonna be different. Right, but I think it's gonna be still transformational for this community. I, I, can, I can see you know, development across the street happening and uh, more opportunities for small businesses to come into community. Uh, I can see so much more growth. I think that what we're seeing, the new center, uh, is long overdue. I think that we have to be very intentional as we begin to look at our resources and strategically place those resources 
in the neighborhoods that need them. I owe so much to this center. If I was a millionaire, I couldn't pay what King Center has done for me and my family. I'm hoping and praying I'd be around to walk in the doors of the Dream Center. <laughs>